All right, I want to talk, uh, yeah, talk about these applications of quadratics. A couple, couple of them. Maybe uh, you're familiar with uh, maybe a little of this. So <clears throat> the first one, let's just talk. Uh, let's talk about the Pythagorean theorem. It is an example of a problem that involves a quadratic. By quadratic, of course, I mean what? What kind of things does a quadratic have? Has an x squared in it, right? <clears throat> x squared or something squared. And so, yeah, certainly Pythagorean theorem, if you know it, you know it has squared terms in it because, uh, yeah, Pythagorean theorem, we're talking about the right triangle, triangle with a 90 degree angle measure there. <clears throat> uh, now, the, uh, the sides that make up the right triangle, uh, the, the right angle, those are called the legs. And then the longest side is opposite, right, the 90 degree. That'll be the longest side. These two will be smaller. The opposite one to the 90 degree angle, that's called the hypotenuse. <clears throat> And so the Pythagorean theorem is based upon a right triangle. This theorem only works for the right triangles. <clears throat> now, usually we label the uh, legs A and B, right? And then the hypotenuse, it'll be a C. A, B for the legs and the hypotenuse C. And the Pythagorean theorem actually states the relationship then amongst the sides. It turns out that if you square the legs and add them together, that's going to equal the square of the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's what's known as the little Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> Always is the relationship amongst the sides. Now, not to be confused there, there's also a formula. You know, we talked about the formula for uh, the angles of a triangle. Um, this is this is. A, and that goes for any triangle, but this is for right triangles. <clears throat> Perhaps the most famous one of all of the right triangles uh, is the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. That's a uh, pretty widely known. If this one's three, that one's four, and that one's five in this right triangle, yeah, that <coughs> has, you can see the relationship there, three squared plus four squared does equal five squared, doesn't it? Because that's nine plus 16, and that does equal five squared 25. So that, uh, just how it works, <coughs> okay? So you square them, add them together, and they equal the square of the hypotenuse. Now, what if I had, the problems we'll do on these is ones with uh, missing sides, of course. That's where the application of it comes in. <clears throat> All right, so number one of application quadratics. Uh, <clears throat> find the missing link. And it will be here. We got a two and a five, and then a missing one. Of course, there's our right angle. Which one? The, the trick of it, of course, is uh, label, label, labeling them correctly. You want to be sure to get them labeled because you won't always necessarily be finding C or A or B. It just depends on what, uh, what you got. But in this case, which one is missing? It is C missing. C <coughs> is the hypotenuse. C is always the hypotenuse, and it's the longest side. C is always the hypotenuse, and it's the longest side. 
<clears throat> has to be that way, okay? So in this case, I am missing the longest side, so I'm <clears throat> it is a hypotenuse. Okay, so the others are A and B. You can call A the 5, the B is 2. And so plug that into our uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared formula, the Pythagorean theorem. And what do I have? Well, I have A is 5, so that would be 5 squared. B is 2, so that would be 2 squared equals C squared. And so that's why we bring it up here now, because how do I solve that? Well, of course, this is 25 plus 4, which is 29. <clears throat> how do I solve that? Well, square, use the square root method, right? Square root both sides. Now, usually we include a plus and a minus. Uh, some of you did forget that, but uh, in this case, you'd be okay with that because why, why don't I need a minus here? Well, I'm talking the side length here, and side lengths are not going to be a negative length. So, yeah, we don't need the negative. It's just positive. <clears throat> Might as well just say it's positive. So C equals uh, square root of 29. And they may ask you to round it to uh, one decimal place or two decimal places or whatever. So to one decimal place, what would I have there? C would be, yeah, it's a little over five. Uh, five point. 5.39, so it'll be 5.4 to, to one decimal place, okay? They may or may not <clears throat> want you to round it, but in case they do, there you go. All right? So number two, same problem. You know, the triangle doesn't have to be shown that way that we've done it twice now. It can be like this. So that's 2.1. And 4.2 <coughs> is there. Of course, this is the right angle right here. Is C missing the missing one here? C is not the missing one here because what is C? Yeah, the C is 4.2. It's the longest side, which the way it's oriented here happens to be right here. It's just opposite the right angle. So if we call this one A, then let's find we're finding B. Or vice versa, A and B, you can swap those around. But, yeah, I need to find out what this is. So I do my a squared, be 2.1 squared, plus b squared, which I don't know, equals c squared, so that would be 4.2 quantity squared. All right, so let's go ahead and square those. Let's see, I think 2.1 squared is 4, 4.41. 4 is that right? Plus b squared equals 4.2 squared, 17.64. What you say? 17.64, thank you. All right, now, what am I going to do here? This one is uh, one similar to actually one of the test questions, maybe, but move this 4.41, right? Subtract the 4.41, and that's b squared equals, well, that would be 13. Point 2, 3, and so then we're to the same, <clears throat> same spot, square root both sides, don't have to worry about the minus there, so B equals the square root of 13.23, and that probably would certainly be one you'd want to uh, get one place decimal for that, which would be, what would that be, 3.6, or how many other places they ask you. With me on that. So far, so good? All right. Well, <laughs> let's do one where none of the links really are known. Find all links with this one. We don't know them, but we know something about them. Let's say, uh, <clears throat> all right, so we're back to... Um, Let's do it this way. This is going to be x. This is going to be 2x minus 2. And this is going to be x plus 2. There's a right angle right there. 
So I don't know any of the lengths, but if I find x, I can find the length. So that's the goal here, to find x. <clears throat> of course, I'm going to have to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared again. What's my a, b, and c? Maybe start with c. Which one is c? 2x minus 2 is c, isn't it? It can't be uh, x or the longest side will be your c. The others uh, <clears throat> doesn't uh, matter on those two. You can flip-flop those if you had them. But All right, so I do the square of that plus the square of that equals the square of that. Right? a squared would be x squared plus b squared would be that squared equals that squared. All right, well, <clears throat> unfortunately, that one is not quite as easy as the other ones. And matter of fact, I'm going to have to use something <clears throat> more than the square root method here to solve this one because I just have too many squared terms, and I've got binomial squareds and more than one binomial squared and all that good stuff. So what do you think? Probably on this one, hopefully, maybe, you're thinking, Write these twice and FOIL. All right. This one, don't forget it. Just bring it down. This one, yeah, we're going to write it twice and FOIL. So along with the x squared, I'll have another x squared. It'll be x squared. Then 2 times x, or x times 2 would be 2x. Then another 2 times x, 2x. And then 2 times 2 would be positive 4. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the 2x minus 2. Write it twice and FOIL. What do I get there? 2x times 2x, 4x squared. 2x times minus 2 is minus 4x. And then minus 2 times 2x minus 4x. And then a minus 4 times a, min <coughs> a minus 2 times a minus 2 is positive 4. So all together on this side, I've got uh, 1x squared, 1x squared. That's 2x squared. 2x and 2x, that's 4x plus 4 equals 4x squared. Minus 4x minus 4x minus 8x plus 4. All right. Now what? Well, like I said, this one's not going to be the square root method because I've just had too many terms run around here. <clears throat> what I'm going to need to do there, aren't I, is make one side 0 because it's an x squared equation. So, since I've got the bigger x squared term over there, I'm going to say minus 2x squared both sides, and then minus 4x both sides, and minus 4 both sides to make the left side be 0, wouldn't it? <clears throat> and so that will be 2x squared minus 12x, aha, 0, four is 0 out. Okay, then I'll look to uh, factor. <clears throat> Can I factor that? I think so. It's got a GCF of uh, 2x. So pull out a 2x, which will make it at x minus 6 with that. And that will mean either 2x equals 0 or x minus 6 equals 0, wouldn't it? Well, 2x equals 0 divided by 2, and you got x is 0. Is that going to work? Not going to work. Just like a negative side, you can't have a 0 side either. Wouldn't be much of a triangle if we had that. So it must be this over here, add 6. x is 6. All right. <clears throat> well, we we're to find all the lengths. We got one of the lengths, 6. What's the other lengths? Well, one of the other lengths is x plus 2. Well, if x is 6, that'd be 6 plus 2, that'd be 8. And then 2x minus 2 is the hypotenuse. Well, if x is 6, that would be 2 times 6 is 12 minus, that'd be 10. 6, 8, and 10 are those lengths there. How about that? Uh, <coughs> got x is 6, right? So 2 times 6, yes, how I got the 10 there. All right, 
Let me do... Uh, other one here. <clears throat> uh, let's say we've got uh, this information. This one's not the Pythagorean theorem, but it's uh, like it in some ways. But let's say we've got the area of a triangle to be uh, 70 meters squared. <clears throat> if the base is 13 meters shorter than the height, find the base and height. So, now, like I said, this one uh, isn't a Pythagorean theorem because we're not talking necessarily about a right triangle. We just know the area of a triangle is 70. <clears throat> well, what you have to uh, recall there, know there, is what we mean by area of a triangle or formula for area of a triangle. Does anybody happen to have that one? Area would be one half base times height. Yeah, one half base times height is area of a triangle. Okay, and what it tells me is that the base is 13 meters shorter than the height. So <clears throat> wouldn't that, this 13 meters shorter, the base is, wouldn't that mean the base is 13 less, so it would be uh, H minus 13? Wouldn't that be how it could phrase that? Yeah, the base is 13 meters shorter, so the base is 13 shorter, H minus 13, than the height. Okay, so I can <clears throat> make that. It's kind of like a substitution here problem. Uh, make the base be H minus 13. And I also know, don't I, that the area is 70 here. So I replace A by 70. And so I have this little equation here, which... Uh, <clears throat> come to find out is a uh, going to be a quadratic also, that's why I'm mentioning it here. Oh, Question. Three. Oh, 13. Yeah. Thank you. I just didn't copy it right there. Thank you. H minus 13, not H minus 3. Just checking you. Okay. <laughs> minus 1. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so this is going to be a quadratic. We've got going to have an H times an H there. Uh, <clears throat> what I would tell you to do with this one, uh, that one half, I can get rid of it. Uh, couldn't I multiply both sides by two? Two times seventy, two times a half H minus thirteen times H. Yeah, <clears throat> so that's going to make it uh, one hundred and forty equal H minus thirteen times H. The twos just cancel out there. Okay, well, <clears throat> unfortunately, even though this one's factored, I can only use it if factored if it's equal to zero, it's equal to 140. So I need to multiply this out. Go ahead and distribute the H out here. And so I'd get 140 equals H squared minus 13H. Because I need one side to be zero, I'm going to have to subtract that 140. Subtract 140 both sides to make one side zero. The left side zero. <laughs> All right, well, that's a good uh, little review here. How are we going to factor this? I think it factors. Of course, we can always try the quadratic formula there, but uh, I believe it factors 140. 14 and 10, that ain't going to work. Uh, <clears throat> what else would work? Um, 20 and 7, there you go. It's not wasn't a too bad one. 20 and 7. 
And with a minus 13, needs to be a minus 20 and a positive 7, doesn't it? <clears throat> so that's going to mean h minus 20 equals 0, h plus 7 equals 0. Add 20, you got h is 20. Subtract 7, you got h is negative 7. Again, like the uh, triangle lengths, you can't have a height that's negative either. So height is uh, 20, be 20 meters. What about the base? Well, the base is h minus 13, so that would be 7 meters, wouldn't it? So anyway, it's a <clears throat> another example where you might come across a quadratic. <clears throat>